Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to start off by landing our Gemini lander here, the Lunapod, at our base. And it seems like we're pretty well lined up. It's not great, uh, but the base is here. So we're going to have to do some sort of correction, but that'll be a good test. I mean, it's good to test whether you can uh, correct at least this much to uh, hit the base. After all, there might be situations. This, uh, this says Kerbal Rescue on it, so I better uh, have some flexibility, right? So let's try it out. I believe it's topped off here. Um, a little bit of room in the bottom, but that should be fine. Uh, it'll, well, we'll, we'll test it like that too. Um, yeah, let, let's just see how it goes. Uh, so we only have Joan Kerman there. And we're going to undock. These two panels aren't good enough. Hmm. Anyway, uh, it doesn't have much of a thrust-to-weight ratio, even with re respect to the moon, so I figured we might want to check it out. I mean, here we have 4,536 meters per second, which is tight for uh, landing and return. We'll see. We are trying to do it with greater precision, but it seems like we've got a power situation that I did not anticipate. Now I haven't landed this particular pod before, so it's going to be first time check out, which means I don't know exactly how well I can land it. A bit of a complication there. More of a complication is that um, our base on the moon there can only accommodate two Kerbals, so one will have to leave. And it might be in this, it might be in one of the other pods that we've landed, the mini pods. Okay, but we have a uh, maneuver to aim at the base. So that's a start. Unfortunately, it will be nighttime. Uh, landing guidance is a little bit tricky because our orbit is entering the ground here, but it does not seem to read anything above zero meters as ground. But there's hardly any ground that low on the moon. So it's not being accurate with me. You can see it's a 17-minute stage. So that's part of the trouble. Well, with seven minutes left, I think I should see what our suicide burn countdown is. How many ignitions do we have with this thing again? We currently have 45 more ignitions. So here goes one. 11 minutes, huh? Well, that's cutting down really fast there. So that's lying. That's assuming a straight trajectory down, I guess. I don't know how it's reading 15 kilometers. That doesn't seem like 15 kilometers to me. Anyway, the suicide burn countdown is a little bit more positive. Uh, maybe now we're more landing short and that's why we're having a problem. Oh, we're going to have to throttle up, judging from the... Wait, it's not letting me throttle up. Hey. Uh... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something is... Has locked my throttle? Uh, that's not good. Um, I don't know why I'm not able to throttle. Left shift doesn't work either. Hold on. There shouldn't be anything locking the throttle, surely. Uh... Okay, that's not good either. Um, using keys, using my throttle lever, nothing. So I'm going to quickly Alt F4 and then try something different. Okay, we are picking this up again with the beginning of Descent with Joan Kerman and 
I don't know why my throttle did not respond at that point. Joan is a pilot, so there's no reason for the throttle to have any issue. But here we go again, uh, we are making a correction burn to meet up with the base. That works. And uh, I did take the opportunity to fill up on electric charge at the station this time, and also food, water, and oxygen, and top off the bottom tanks, though not the upper tanks. Altogether, the approach had been pretty good, so it's really disappointing that we had that problem. Okay, well, here we go again. Trajectory looks fine. Suicide burn countdown is looking alright. Maybe I shouldn't throttle down quite as much as I did last time. I don't know if that caused a problem or not. Let me just keep the throttle wiggling, maybe. It wasn't because I had the cursor over mech jab. I know that if you have the cursor over mech jab, you can't control things, but I had moved the cursor off of it. So that was not the cause. Okay, that's pretty good target difference, and it was saying two minutes for the suicide burn countdown, so wait a bit. We are pretty darn high here. Not the most efficient approach ever, but fuel-wise, we're okay for ascent after this. Remember, we need about 2,200 to get back to orbit. At least that's what I would reserve. We're going to be landing a bit far away from the base compared to what I wanted. Okay. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we broke a landing strut. Shoot. Trying to switch between modes was a little bit dodgy. Okay, a lot dodgy. Okay, and we're gonna use a lot of ignitions right now. Ah, it bounced again. Okay, landing with this thing is not safe, I've discovered. Yeah, this is not an ideal system. I think this is a situation where if we can get it back up again, we should abort to orbit or something. That's a big if, though. We're sort of in a standard sort of messed up pod situation for the moon. The problem is the throttling on the engine isn't deep enough to land this properly, and it takes too long to spool up. I think we'll eventually just, like, cannibalize this for material kits or something. Oh, uh, two landing struts are broken. That's no good for trying to up get us upright. Okay, I'm gonna have Joan transfer out and go into uh, go into Moonbase One, and then one of the others will take one of the other ships up. Uh, hatch is obstructed. Okay, we need to. So I think the thing to do will be to replace the Luna Pod engine with like Gemini lander engines. It won't be quite as efficient. Um, we'll see what we can do with that. But the Gemini lander engines are definitely much more pleasant to land with. Could try lunar module descent engines. I forget how if they have limited ignitions, they probably do. Okay, I think I've gotten the hang of EVA hops with these jetpacks without falling flat on the Kerbal's face. Okay, like a pro. Alright. Almost out of EVA propellant. Now we have to go inside Moonbase 1 and our pilot in residence is Chrysleon, so Chrysleon will EVA. 
and Crystalline will take one of the Light Lunar Lander Mark II's up to the station. Okay, this has 2,586, which is more than enough to rendezvous. Let's retract the ladder. Target the station. Remember that the station is going retrograde. <laughs> Very important. Hmm. Well, we're uh, not controlling from the right location, it seems. Why is it upside down? Okay, now it's frozen. Okay, there we go. What the heck were we... I guess we were controlling from that docking port. We'll eventually have to do that, but this is not the time. Okay, um... Electric charge is fine. Chrysalian brought like 28,000 over with her. So no problems there. Okay, I think we're good to go. <laughs> Trying to figure out the inclination here. Okay, well, we've got enough apoapsis, actually. Okay, that's good enough. We've got one day and 20 hours of life support on here. And our orbital period is an hour and 55 minutes. And we seem to close 500 kilometers in that time. So we should meet up with it in about 10 hours. But we do have some corrections to make. Okay, we've got a matching apoapsis there. Good enough on the inclination difference after this maneuver, and it'll cost about 138. Might be better just to use RCS for this, considering how little stage time we have on the main engines. Then again, I think the fuel mixture is different, so it's probably more efficient to just use the main engines and have them throttle down, since they have 11% uh, minimum throttle compared to 70% for the engines on the Luna pod. Okay, well, this has been an imperfect crew rotation from the surface of the moon, but still our first attempted attempted crew rotation from the surface of the moon and that's something you don't normally have that sort of thing happening we will probably have to have a heavier lander if we replace the engine currently on that one with uh, Gemini lander engines because they're not quite as efficient and they require service module tanks okay we are approaching moon port 1 and we're trying to dock up there on the vessel that actually brought the fuel for the Luna pod. I think. I don't know if we're completely lining up with it. I guess it's about right. No, we seem to be... I don't know, maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. I trust that this has enough room to dock there. It's fairly small. Okay, and dot. All right, Chris Leon is up uh, accompanying Lara Kerman in orbit. So we have two Kerbals back up here, two Kerbals on the surface. Well, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but let's just take what we can get and continue on with other things. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the next thing, and it is another attempt at a Mars sample return mission. We see here that we actually have fuel up here uh, to make the return, hopefully, but it does take a lot. Uh, you can see 7,500 meters per second there, and we'll probably need all of it. We need about 4,000 to get back into orbit, uh, maybe 2,500 to 3,000 to get back to Earth. So yeah, it's and obviously there are corrections along the way. So it's going to be a tough deal, but here it is. Let me make sure staging, so this is just the go around stage, decouple, heat shield decoupling, probably before landing. And I don't actually remember if our parachutes worked out, but um, I think it's okay. <laughs> Here we go again. Um, it. Uh, I do remember 
it toppling, right? I think we had problems making sure. I always tip over. It's just, it's just a thing with me. I don't know why, but lots of tipping over always. Uh, let me extend this. Oh, I don't need to extend that right now anyway. No, that's a bonus. Okay, so electric charge is fine. Those are out. And we just need to do a minor correction to lift our periapsis. We're gonna come straight down, but we don't need to be harsh about it. 45.5 kilometers should do the trick. Okay, so we are in Mars SOI and approaching Mars. It's tempting at this point to use this engine to slow us down a bit, but probably overdoing it. Let me just make sure we have enough power. I notice a bunch of batteries down here. Makes me wonder how much power we have up here. 5,840. Well, should be enough. Let's wait until we're closer before dumping the service module. All right, our fuel situation of above seems... Oh, well, these could do with a top off. Okay, I think that's all. Let's arm these chutes and separate off the asterisk stage here. Okay, not the most vigorous separation ever, but that's all right. That is normal and we are going retrograde. Let's have caps lock on so it doesn't use too much of the fuel. I'm going to pre-ignite the Gemini lander engines. Of course, this mission is currently heavier than the previous mission we landed. It's got all this fuel, so the dynamics are going to be a bit different. It's using some fuel to hold us. In theory, the panel and the Satellite dish should be balanced, but I guess maybe a little bit off. We haven't captured yet. Also, I wasn't planning for a go around, but we might need to at this rate. Well, that's a capture at any rate, but we might have to go around, yeah. Look at the little craft we have in various orbits around Mars. A lot of the Uber Prober probes that uh, delivered stuff to Phobos or Deimos, but otherwise provided communication support when that was a little bit more important. After this, we have to do a maneuver with the Pluto Ambassador. I might want to hold off before doing something with the next. Mars sample return mission. Yeah, I think we'll wait on that until next time. You know, take into consideration what happens with this. Well, what we have learned is that this might be too heavy an object for this particular heat shield size. And that's not entirely surprising, because I think the benchmark is uh, 15 tons you need a 5 meter heat shield, and then 60 tons need a 10 meter heat shield. This is 10 tons, so 15 tons you need a 5 meter heat shield, 3 meter heat shield might be a little bit small for 10 tons. Oh, uh, we're going up again. Hopefully it'll keep us down. I don't want to go around again. Okay, I don't think we're going to end up in space. But it's a close call. Yep, we are going to stay in the atmosphere, though we are taking a brief hop here. Well, this short hop, as it were, has brought us all the way to dawn here. We've crossed quite a distance. Not really slowing down that much. Okay, we are slowing down dramatically. 
I think I should take it out of time warp here. We really need to be going a lot slower for parachute deployment. That'll be at 8 kilometers. Yeah, this isn't what I call slow. I don't know what the Mars equivalent velocity that we need for parachute deployment is exactly, but we certainly need to slow down. I'll try and use the engines here. And separate off the heat shield now. Oh god, that was a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, probably shouldn't do that. We do have a reaction wheel here. That's nice. Um, I guess we could try and land this here. Arm parachute. Toggle info. Um, altitude. Um, something like that. Well, okay. There's a lot to learn as far as landing probes on Mars, obviously. I feel like the reaction wheel is not very helpful, but I'm also afraid if I decouple it, it'll smash into us just like the heat shield did. I thought by having the Gemini lander engines firing... Okay, the, the parachute's not really deploying, though. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. That did not go so well. Okay, well, let's try something that's reasonably simple, though critical. This is the Pluto Ambassador, and we've got a maneuver node in 24 days, and that maneuver is essential to make sure that this, well, we have to zoom out quite a lot now, um, will pass by Jupiter correctly in order to head to Saturn and then Pluto. Now, that's a touchy business, obviously. Uh, that's quite a thing. And also, uh, the contract requires us to do this. Um, you see, we, we're arriving in 12 years and 71 days. And the contract ends in 5, uh, 4,532 days, which, uh, well, anyway, it's pretty darn close to 12 years and 71 days. Close enough that uh, we cannot risk arriving later. So let's do this carefully. Let's make sure that we retain periapses around Jupiter and Saturn and don't accidentally fall into them. All right, time warping through the 24 days and precision. Looking for precision here. Okay, uh, let me turn off RCS and see if we've got a reaction wheel. We do. That'll save us some inaccuracy. If we use RCS, of course, that could throw us off. Still, it's a 919.9 meter per second burn, so not small. Okay, here we go. This seems largely a matter of meeting up with Jupiter earlier. You can see there are periapsis going from 320 to 319. We're trying to meet up with it about 20 days earlier in order to make the rest of this occur. Interesting strategy. Oh, it looks like we don't need the Saturn encounter. It's direct from Jupiter to Pluto like New Horizons did. Pretty close right now, actually. But I gather we have to be a little bit closer to what we plotted. We seem to be arriving two hours earlier. Well, okay, let's get rid of that and see how the Pluto end of things looks. We probably need to fix it just a little bit. Yeah, right now we're not encountering Pluto at all. Well, there we go. Can we get closer to Pluto? This is important. Yeah, I think that's as good as we're going to get for now. Um, let's turn off RCS. Use the reaction wheel to turn towards the node. Okay. Now RCS on. Uh, up, up, up. Okay, RCS off. 
Okay, we have uh, Pluto periapsis, and then if we try and make orbit around Pluto, that's not that's not going to work out for us. Okay, so making orbit around Pluto not going to happen, but we've got that Pluto periapsis. But let's pay attention to things, let's say, after we pass by Jupiter. We'll want to watch it pass by Jupiter, but we don't have to pay attention to it when it enters Jupiter SOI. Maybe around here-ish would be good enough. All right, so add that alarm. And at that point, we will check in with our Pluto ambassador, now properly aimed at Pluto. Okay, just for safety's sake, I think I'll leave it right there because we've had some mishaps in today's episode. And I'd like to start off fresh with hopefully better luck next time. Uh, we do have a lot of missions pending. And in particular, I would like to aim for that Earth to Jupiter transfer window next time, which means finally launching our Nerva Tug and the Jupiter low orbit mission. So with luck, we'll get to that. But first, we have to get through the Mars Sample Return 2 mission, the next one up. Hopefully we don't make a mistake on that again. I might want to do some Mars testing on the side just to get some practice with that. And then Mars Base 1, a super critical. Really, the Mars Sample Return missions were sort of practice so that I could land that right. Uh, that's not working out so well so far, but uh, definitely before I proceed with the next episode, I would like to uh, get some practice in to make sure those two work all right. And then finally, the Nerva mission after that. So with that on deck for the next episode, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.